Hi, my name is Rabbi Shaul Gromer. I'm a rabbi from Yeshiva University. And I have arrived at a conclusion of who's going to be the next president and why, and for some insights about the future as well, based on my own original Bible code. I know that recently uh, Rabbi Glazer supported his particular Bible code. Uh, and this has nothing to do with my particular Bible code because I've been working on this for eight years. Uh, this Bible code has all different things that connect with it. Uh, today, in just in a few minutes, I'm just going to apply it to the presidency and particularly Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, who will win this election? And why? And I will link to the larger picture, the Shia, the future, and so forth. The answer is that, based, first of all, the code has been consistent. The code has been, has been able to give the insight for the last 100 years. So I feel very comfortable when I apply to a new president because it relates to presidents, and this is the, 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 one of the core, core, core parts of the, of the code. Every American president in this code corresponds to a portion in total, a portion of the five books of Moses. I have with me the Living Torah by Rabbi Arye Kaplan. This is the five books of Moses. Nishi the Living Torah by Arye Kaplan. It is the Living Torah because it applies to our time, it applies to the future, it applies to the past. Everything is in this Torah. So, the question is how do we find what's out there in the Torah? So I found a code that enables me to draw that connection and make that connection. And that connection is that every president, every American president, is connected to a portion of the Torah. How we read it in the synagogues around the world, we divide up the five books into 53 portions every week, another portion is read in the synagogue. Each portion corresponds to one American president, and I've worked this out with amazing accuracy from the beginning of the America till today. Uh, an example of that would be uh, Abraham Lincoln, who's the 16th president, the 16th parsha, the 16th, we call it a parsha, portion of the parsha, is Beshalach, the freeing of the slaves. And that's the story of the Jews literally leaving Egypt, splitting the sea, freedom. And he is the one who freed the slaves. Uh, we go further, let's say Nixon. You figure out what number president he is in the number portion of the, of the Torah, you find that he corresponds to Shlach Lecho. Shlach Lecho deals with spies. Uh, who spied, who were called spies, but really there were scouts, ten scouts, who said bad reports in the land of Israel, and as a result, the whole Jewish nation uh, suffered as a result of that. Uh, well, we know that Nixon suffered because he got caught spying Watergate. We go through things throughout the history of America. It's absolutely amazing. Phenomenal. It's amazing. And I, and I went through this, and I spent hundreds of hours on this particular code and analyzing how it applies to all the things around us. And now we'll apply to today, to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, who will be the next president. And this is what I concluded, that based on this code, the overriding proof is that Donald Trump will be the next president. And I have an extra hint that he'll be president for eight years. I even would add, just as a, as a caveat, that there seems to be indication that after eight years, Ted Cruz will come back and be the next president in eight years, just so he, well, if he's listening to this. So, Let's see how it works. The 45th parsha, the 45th portion, is called the Eskan. It's the name, Hebrew name. It essentially begins with the, the tale of Moses, who pleading with God, let me into the land of Israel. This is what I want. This is what I've been wait, wanting all my life. This is what I want to do. Everything I've done is leading to me to go to the land of Israel. And God says, you cannot go. You cannot go. And why not? Because you sit. You hit the rock. I told you, speak to the rock. They wanted water. Speak to the rock. Water would come out of this rock miraculously. And you instead, you hit the rock and you sit. And then look at that sin. You're not going to go to the land of Israel. So I looked at this and I said, okay, based on this thing that I saw, these connections, consistent connections to presence, and I can't have to really go through it fully in this small video, I want to know how can we apply that? So there seems to be two ways of looking at it. You could say that maybe this is going on Donald Trump. Maybe Donald Trump, he's always projected as someone who's angry, angry, uh, not respectful, hit, hits the rock. He's the one who hits the rock, and he's been told, you can't go into the land of Israel, you won't be the next president. You won't go to the, the Hamas land. You won't go forward. That's certainly a very strong argument. However, I concluded that it's really much more likely to go on to the land. For one single basic reason, where while she was a leader, while she was the leader of this nation, just like Moses was the leader of the nation, and a leader is judged on a higher level, even to, the, to like a hair's breadth, a hair's width. 
it's 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 much more careful with the leader, and that's exactly the point. Because your actions, he's saying, those affects everything. Everything comes from that. That little change that you made, hitting the rocks in a corner, has a huge impact. So you see that this is the Hillary Clinton more than to Donald Trump. Trump, if you say he did the same thing as Hillary, and it really does not even matter. If he did it, even if he did exactly the same thing, but he never was a leader. As a leader, it makes a whole different difference. So when I see that this is being told, you're not going to the land of Israel, this to me is much more conclusive that it's going to Hillary Clinton also. The language, the Hebrew language, God says to Moses, you have enough. Don't keep talking about this thing. Ravlov, you have enough. Meaning you have, you got plenty of things. You got plenty of war and following me up until now and whatever. Ravloch. Now the word in Hebrew, Ravloch, Loch is feminine. There's enough to you, feminine. I believe that's a hint to the feminine, the female candidate. You have enough. She plenty, he has plenty, she has plenty. I was just in Arkansas, they have a whole airport named after Hillary and Bill and Hillary Clinton, Clinton Airport. She's got plenty of honor, plenty of money, plenty of, she was Ravloch. And she had a lot of experience, she had all those wonderful opportunities. She had plenty. So I know it's very exciting to have a new Amer a woman president, but Ravloch would apply to her. But more conclusively, there are many, many things in the part in this portion, and I'm basing myself on, again, years that I've watched this pattern uh, emerge, that this, this, portion, this portion clearly, clearly points to Donald Trump. Another example would be, in this portion, we have constant mention, actually 13, could be 14, mentions of fire. Fire coming up throughout the, the portion of the Eskani. And I, this really tipped me off to who would be the next president. And I've been actually talking about Donald Trump being the next president going back about 10 months already. Uh, but way before two Super Tuesday, way before anything. I said, he seems to be the next president. And people were laughing at me, and there was many, many chances that, that uh, Bernie Sanders looked very popular. And this one, I said, no, I kept very consistent, and I'm so consistent, that he will win, and he'll be president for the next eight years. And the, the, uh, the, the, the imagery of fire, when I think of Donald Trump, well, he's a fiery person. Of all the candidates, he's the most fired up. <laughs> and also, fire is very unpredictable. I light a fire go in any direction. Well, Donald Trump always wants to be unpredictable. He says we should be unpredictable toward the enemies. He, he is unpredictable. In fact, he left us unpredictable whether or not he'll even accept the election outcome. He don't even know whether to accept it. Never before the such a thing. So very unpredictable. This is fire. Plus, he burns. You touch me, you get burned. So this is one of the examples of Aish, the fire, that we see that it's also just as a cute note, is his show, The Apprentice, what, what was his line? You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. So he had fire there. Now, the thing is, he also talks about being smart. He says, we have, to, we have to now, the nations of the world, to look at us and instead of thinking we're so stupid, making these ridiculous deals, they should make us realize that we're really smart. And in this portion, it talks about that you're, uh, they will hear all these words and say, this great nation is certainly a wise and understanding people. So clearly, the perception of the world toward America is going to change, it looks like. Under Donald Trump, in fact, that he will achieve what he's going to do. That he will achieve bringing uh, a, a new level of respect for America, which I believe is an amazing thing. The other thing, which is very interesting to me, and perhaps it's a small, it's a small hint, is that he's a billionaire. Two billion, that's, that's huge. So I was thinking that number two is certainly very appropriate to the portion because they talk about the two luchos, the two tablets. <laughs> two two huge things that, like we think about it, it it's, it's stretches beyond us. Billion dollars, can you imagine a billion dollars? So when you think of the Lucas, if we have to translate it to a physical thing, it's something that's physical, yet it stretches beyond us. A billion dollars is two billion, I mean a million, a million dollars stretches to two, a billion is even beyond that. So two billion, uh, so a billion is, 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 is two, is, is gives us a, 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 another level. Of of, uh, of 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 richness. And now the richness of Donald Trump is also last thing I bring out to this point. I have many many points that go on and on. The richness of Donald Trump relates to very important. Issues. All your heart, all your soul, and all your might. And when they say all your might, it also alludes to money. All your money. And it, he certainly has a lot of money, and he's has an opportunity to, to use his money. He's invested his money in serving, the, getting serving, the, serving the, the 
giving, get him, in fact, I believe he will continue to, to throw money into serving the country, which is a good thing. But in addition to that, I went there, the idea of love of God has a lot to do with a rich person. Because rich person doesn't have to worry about no limitations. He can do it, he can go. Admit. So if the person could do whatever they want and they still turn and serve God, that means he's serving God from love, not from fear. And that is one of the characteristics that a person who's really rich and say, but I still serve you, that represents the idea that there's no limitations and I still serve you only because I choose to serve my love. And this is, uh, I believe, one of the aspects that are highlighted in this particular portion. Uh, the bottom line is that Donald Trump will be the next president, and this, as Rabbi Gleason was highlighting the idea of Mashiach, I'm not putting that emphasis so much, but certainly everything that goes on, we're getting closer and closer to the times of Mashiach, we're in very, very close to that time, and this clearly will help solidify the country, it will make things stronger and make America great again, the greatness of the Jewish people, I mean, this is clearly brought out in Vaishnavim, giving of the Torah, the, 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 the very famous Shema Yisrael here, or Israel, the Lord is our God, meaning that is our God now, the Lord will be one. The whole world will recognize the same God that we have as just ourselves. The, what we see, what we see, they'll recognize we have something, wisdom, we recognize oneness, that'll spill out into the whole world. That's the same thing here. He says, America first, but then let it spill out into the world. That's the same thing, the formula of that verse, the very famous verse, here we is the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. So there's many, many connections. And in short, I'd like to conclude that this is a, this is a initial video, and I hope this code, hope that it will be expanded and fully explained in future books that I hope to come out with, future videos. Anyhow, this is uh, my conclusion, and this Tuesday we'll expect to see Donald Trump our new president.